Now, joining us is Dr. Busby, Christopher Busby. He is a chemical physicist. He's advised BBC. He's advised uh, EU groups. Uh, he's a very respected professor, University of Ulster in Northern Ireland. Uh, and uh, he joins us today. He's got several websites that pu publishes peer-reviewed work. You can look at it there. But I have to toot his horn. In fact, having him back on, we had him on quite a bit when it was getting a lot of attention, and the public would actually listen. Day one, he said, we have these isotope readings. This shows there's been meltdown. Those are reactor rods being blown in the sky. This is a cover-up. This is much worse than Chernobyl. And we got criticism when he was on. People said, oh, this is fear-mongering. It couldn't be true. Months after, once it wasn't in the news, their own top scientists went public, resigned. Leaders of Japan resigned. They covered it up. There's been an exodus out of central Japan to the south. Even though the government says it's safe, the public isn't stupid. There's been reported deaths associated with radiation poisoning. The Fukushima 50 who went in. And now it's just out of sight, out of mind. So giving us a report uh, you know, as we prepare to leave this disastrous year, 2000. And 11, and I'll pull up the date uh, exactly how long ago Fukushima was in a moment, uh, is Dr. Busby to recap what happened and then to explain to us what he thinks may be going on with all these new disasters uh, and where he sees this going in the future. Dr. Busby, thank you for joining us. Yes, hello, Alex. Hi. Um, okay, well, I think people in the future looking back at this event in, in Japan will recognize that this is probably one of the most serious public health uh, accidents, if you like, that, uh, in, in the history of the human race. I, I, the, the, the huge amounts of radioactivity were released and, and still contaminate very large parts of northern Japan. And there has been a probe recently by the Japanese government into, you know, into what happened. And I have to say that the probe found that, that all of my predictions right back at the beginning when I was on the BBC and ITN uh, just after the accident, well, the catastrophe occurred, all, all of my predictions were shown to be accurate. Although at the time, everyone was saying, like you said, you know, this is just scaremongering, the guy's wrong, he's making it up and so on. I have to say also that nobody's apologized to me about any of this, and there's, there's been a deathly hush about uh, about these effects, and we, we learn very little about what's really happening at the reactor, uh, reactors even now. The wrong questions are being asked, and, and no answers are forthcoming. And then we get Twilight Zone comments uh, by people in the London Guardian saying, oh, I'm now for nuclear power because of Fukushima. It's so wondrous. And, and uh, I mean, it's it's so bizarre. Yes, well, that guy, George Monbiot, he, he, uh, he actually took it into his head to attack me personally from the columns of The Guardian two weeks running and, and uh, raked out an awful lot of scurrilous nonsense and lies and so on about me personally. I was, I was quite irritated by all of that, and there's not much I can do about it. And The Guardian newspaper have refused to, well, they haven't allowed me to, to make any sort of response. So uh, it seemed to me that, that this was part of the general operation that was taking place worldwide to try and push nuclear as an option um, to, to solve all of the problems relating to the energy supply to modern civilization. But my, 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 my concern about all this is that the modern civilization that they're trying to fuel is something that is very bad for the people who live within it. Uh, you know, it's actually killing people. The, the, the system itself... Which is, which is something that you, you talk about a lot. I, and, but I'm, I'm absolutely with you there. The system itself is not sustainable. It just absolutely isn't. And something has to be done, uh, and, and not, not just about nuclear power, but about the whole, the whole economic structure of the system and the power structure within it before everybody in the world you know, just, just doesn't survive. It's quite terrifying. Well, I mean, here's an example. 30 years ago, and I've talked to top economists on this subject, the U.S. and British governments and others gave out pretty accurate economic numbers on unemployment, on inflation. Now they just put out completely fake numbers. They say unemployment's 8.9, it's really 22 plus. Uh, they say inflation's 3%, it's really 11 or more. Uh, and I mean, it, it's almost a, a insanity by the ruling class now where their children are breathing this radiation. And, and I mean, in, Fuc in, in Chernobyl in 86, they made a real effort, as you know, to keep people from eating the food and, and drinking the milk for at least six months you know, to mitigate some of it. Now there's not even an attempt. Yes, that's right. The, the, the Soviets, although, although everyone at the beginning of this Fukushima catastrophe were, were talking about how it wasn't 
wasn't anything like Chernobyl. Actually, the, the, the Soviet authorities evacuated people from Chernobyl very quickly, and they, uh, and they, did, and they really did do their best. What we see here is, is a, 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 an almost a, a totally cynical um, and criminal um, set, set, uh, set of policies which, which, which are, are sacrificing an enormous number of people to a kind of god of, of, of nuclear futures. Um, and I'm not quite sure how it happens because people ask me again and again, they say, you know, how is it that these people don't recognize that they themselves and their children will suffer the consequences of these exposures? But it does seem as if they don't. It seems as if there's some kind of zombification or, or, or Sovietization of history in the West now where the, the, the big newspapers, and I include The, the Guardian, where, where George Bombier was, was writing his pieces, um, com, having been converted to nuclear, they, they, they seem to have become part of a, an appalling sort of cover-up system, like, rather like you know, the worst days of Stalin. It's, it's really hard to know where this is all going. You've really put a, a good verbal description of it, it of something that is indescribably insane. But, but but breaking down the real history, which they now admit, for those that don't know, because it, it's been buried, what really happened if we go back to the tsunami, March 11th, nine, almost 10 months ago, 2011, what really happened with those six reactors? Okay, well, what, what, well as far as we can tell, what happened was this, that there was an enormously um, powerful earthquake, and that the earthquake uh, caused uh, damage to the reactors before the tsunami hit. And this damage to the reactors cut off the cooling supply to the reactors. And so, of course, they started to melt, they started to boil, and uh, the water boiled away, and then the, the rods started to melt down. Now, the story is that, in fact, they, shut, they went into cold shutdown automatically at the time of the, uh, uh, of the earthquake. And then what happened was that the backup generators, the systems that were supposed to continue to provide cooling, were, were wiped out by the, by the water from the tsunami. It actually really doesn't matter that much which of those uh, is correct, because what then happened was that there were, in my opinion, nuclear explosions and hydrogen explosions, which, which effectively destroyed most of those reactors in the first week. And we can tell that from levels of radioactivity that were measured in various detectors uh, quite far to the south of, of Tokyo. You can, you can see the levels of radiation increasing uh, and, and staying high in the week following, uh, on the Monday following, following the, the, the tsunami. So we know even at that time that the reactors had melted down. But, all, but at that time, the International Atomic Energy Agency and TEPCO and the Japanese government were still telling people that there was no problem, that the reactor pressure vessels were intact and so forth. It was clear to me, looking at the, the video footage on YouTube, and in fact, isn't it interestingly depressing that we have to now get our accurate news from YouTube rather than from the newspapers? But looking at the video footage on YouTube, you could see that the force of the explosion, at least in reactor number three, was so great that it couldn't possibly be a hydrogen explosion. And at that time, I was saying it was a nuclear explosion like the Chernobyl explosion. And by the way, I've had people on the show who aren't physicists, and they just say, oh, that's impossible. But I've talked to other physicists, and they say, no, that... That, that, that things can purify out into levels and that you can get smaller uh, explosions. And here you are, uh, you know, you're an acclaimed physicist. You're saying this can happen, but the media went along with it and said that can't happen. No, well, I know they said it couldn't happen, but there was a very famous uh, British physicist who was talking, who talked about the famous explosion at Kishtim in Chelyabinsk in 1959, which was similar, a similar explosion in a spent fuel pond. And, they, and he said that couldn't happen either, but it did happen. And I think the way in which it happens is that when these... When these Tell you what, stay there. This is riveting. Stay there, Dr. Bozzi. We'll come back, talk more about Fukushima, what's currently happening there, and then we'll look at all these other disasters. Uh, Dr. Busby, you were getting into how nuclear explosions can take place. And, of course, after you first reported this, they did pick up the isotopes that they had to admit only happened during those type of explosions. Yes, that's right. We, we still don't, don't know exactly what the concentrations of the isotopes are that would enable us to tell the kind of explosion that occurred. But my point that I would make is this, is that actually you have, put in, in one, at least in the reactor that where I think there was a nuclear explosion, you have plutonium and uranium mixed together. Now, if the temperature gets high enough, then what happens is that one of those will distill off at a different temperature and then concentrate at a cooler part of the, of, of the reactor vessel or, or the tank that this is contained in. And, of course, it only needs to have a few kilograms of that to form a, a, a critical mass.
mass, and then you've got an atom bomb. So, so, that, so, so there's an, a mechanism that's quite easy to explain. It's, it's exactly like distilling alcohol and water. You're distilling plutonium and uranium, but just at a much higher temperature. And so then when all the alcohol stroke plutonium comes together in one place, bang. And you've also got explosions going on around it that could be the precursor explosion. from what there is in the, in, the, in the universe sure as you know doctor there's now been nobel prizes handed out proving that when you have these black holes you have these quasars you have these exploding suns that they're finding that the energy isn't there for that and that it is dark matter exactly so but dark matter is a bit like just invoking a demon you know you, 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 you put together a whole load of equations and you say this will give us the answer and you find it only gives you five percent of the answer you say well the rest of it is a demon well i know you call it the dark, call it dark matter but Holy Mother Church at the time of Galileo, as far as I can see. Yeah, man has got a lot of high tech te technologies, but doesn't even understand most of what's connected to it. I think that's true. I think that the last that the last uh, century was the century of the physicists, and it's about time we moved away from that and realized that physics, physics is very, a very powerful tool, but it's a very reductionist tool. And it's about time that people started to think for themselves and that they, 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 they stopped believing in this sort of magical idea that the physicists knows what he's talking about, because generally speaking, he doesn't. And in the case of radiation and health, which is my area, he certainly doesn't, because lots of people are going to die as a result of Fukushima, and at the moment they're saying nobody is. Well, I've seen reports in Japan, though, that people are dying, but they always, who work there, but they're always saying something else did it. Of course, that's what they will say. It's exactly what they said with Chernobyl. We, we've just had a book, incidentally, which I hope to plug. It's called Fukushima and Health, What to Expect, and it's based entirely upon the uh, research that was done after Chernobyl. So we kind of know what's going to happen at Fukushima, and it's already happening. I, I get emails uh, uh, regularly telling me that people are just dropping dead. You know, school children are dropping dead. One minute they're there, and then their heart stops and they fall down dead. And this is exactly what we found in Chernobyl, because the cesium gets into the heart muscle and it destroys heart muscle, and when a certain amount of heart muscle is gone, the heart is no longer viable, and then you get a heart attack and die. Incredible. You know, I wanted to get you back on to give us the latest on Fukushima. I didn't even know you had a book out, but when we come back from break, please, I want people to get it and read it and pass it on to friends. So we'll definitely uh, talk about the book when we come back. We're about to go to break, but what's the latest? Because they're claiming that they've stabilized Fukushima, but we've heard this quite a bit in the last nine months. Well, I think this is discourse manipulation. I, I mean, stabilized means that, that, that it's not any worse than it was when they stabilized it. But if, that, but if by that they're somehow saying it's safe, they're I mean, we know that there's xenon isotopes are coming out in the last month that, that, that show that very short half-life isotopes that show that, they, that it's continuing to fission. And I think it's pretty certain that, the, that the, the fuel is molten and it's gone through the reactor pressure vessel and it's in the ground. And Russia today are telling me that the big cracks in the ground and steam is coming out and so on. So we're talking about a very serious situation which they're just trying to downplay because they want to uh, limit the, the damage that it's going to cause to the development of nuclear power worldwide. Well, all I know is that they've got a history of covering this stuff up, and it's not safe. Well, you're right there. You're right there, and it's continuing, that history. Well, and, and, and I wouldn't all just blame it on physicists. I mean, obviously, you're a physicist, so you can talk about your own discipline. But look, 25 years ago, they said never use DU in war. It's deadly. It blows back. It's a soft kill weapon, a delayed kill. You can't use it. And in 91, they just said, we're going to use it. And now they just say it's good for the troops. We'll be right back.